My journey all started when I was 11 years old. I walked into my room and found my mom hysterically crying in my bed. I immediately knew something was wrong. <laughs> when she finally calmed down, all she said was, we have to go to the hospital. And from this moment, my life changed. When I arrived at the hospital, my doctor told me that I had been diagnosed with idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura, also known as ITP. A normal human being has 150 to 250,000 platelets in their body at one time. When I was diagnosed, I had zero. I actually used to do drugs and alcohol with a bad group of friends. And coming to the uh, Gordon Bell, I actually got into basketball. And that led me to the scholarship because it was one of the eligibilities that you needed. So, so the social isolation that kind of comes with coming from a, a low-income family or from a strong word is poverty, which I won't say that I came from a family in poverty, but we were a low-income family. So usually when you have a lower income or you're on social assistance or anything, you can't really participate in society the same way as someone who has a stable income. We happen to grow up under the poverty line. The poverty line when I was growing up was $13,000 a year a household income of $13,000 a year. I was 15 when my mom broke $13,000 a year. I was 14 when I got my first new pair of jeans. And so what really drives Frank is not just the, the notion of business ambition, but the actual real joy of creating something wonderful. I'm the son of, of immigrant parents, as is Frank. Frank is Italian. And I think that this country is great because of, of immigrants who came here. Uh, and they came here with nothing to create something. And Frank comes from that. And I, I totally understand what that's like. Um, and um, I think Frank's upbringing uh, really had a great deal that propels him to, to do something that is great because he came from nothing in terms of his family background. Uh, and uh, I think that is a really big part of what drives him. I think that having capital, as soon as I started driving some wealth, I immediately started thinking about how I can give it back. Well, it was really Frank's uh, concept and idea and vision, really. Um, and when he laid it out to me, it, it, uh, it just made a lot of sense, in terms because I know where he was coming from. And uh, I have to say I was really uh, struck by his, um, his vision for it and a sense of generosity. And also just the way he really wanted to engage with the kids. He didn't just want to kind of write a check and get his name on a plaque or something. The young people who apply would probably never have applied for a scholarship before. And when they hear Frank's story, because he does, he walks in the room and he's got the expensive suit and he looks polished and coiffed. And when they hear his story that he overcame adversity, they take a second look at themselves and they see value in the things that they've done other than the academics and they have the internal capacity to go forward and apply for other things that will support them. It could be as simple as a bursary, but they have that confidence to do that. Well, the interview was, uh, I was very scared. I did not know how to talk to them because that was the first time I met all of them at once. So it was very, I was very nervous, very, very nervous. They did not look like they were judging me, they were there to listen to me, so which made it easier for me like to be open. The application is a lot different than other scholarship applications. It asks students, of course, for their transcripts, and it asks for a bit of a lifeline. The lifeline is a tool that we use in the interview, where the students identify high points and low points in their life on a visual organizer that we use as a way to move into the sorts of um, deeply unique parts of each candidate's story. They also prepare a response to a question that asks them to explain to us how their experiences have turned them into a resilient person. And the combination of the lifeline and the question allow us to have a very, very rigorous personal interview. 
it may be the first time that some of these students have asked themselves the kinds of questions that we're asking them. Things like, who are you? Who do you want to be? Where do you want to go? Where have you been? We're looking for academic potential and sometimes we get it right and sometimes we get it wrong. But we're giving the kids a chance to, to show what they got. With the Arlington Street Foundation Scholarship, you kind of join a small little community of support. So once you are a recipient, you usually get a mentor. Um, all of us have mentors. They helped a lot because there's one class I had in third year sociology that I was actually thought I was going to fail. So I got really scared because you have to keep a main, maintain my 3.0 or I may lose my scholarship. And it was a full year course, so that's a lot of credit hours. And if you fail, that really could affect my GPA. So I was really scared, but I told the board, like, this is the situation, and I'm scared I'm going to fail. And Paul messaged me right away and was like, okay, we're going to deal with this. He met, for me with, he met with me for lunch, and he taught me different studying habits and talked through all the content. And I ended up passing with a B plus, so it helped a lot. And they're always there, like when I was nervous or scared or something exciting happened or anything like that, so. Like some courses, I'm not doing good at it. So like I consult with uh, Dave, he's one of them, right? So he helps me say like things that like what I need to do to get better marks and stuff. So they've been with me like ever since I got the scholarship. It's not like they're not there anymore since they gave me the money. So it's like on ongoing process with them, like just talking, interacting with them, so. Uh, where you are today has nothing to do with where you're going. So if kids are struggling and they're having some challenges and they have some internal family turmoil, um, I always tell the kids you can use that story to keep you where you are or you could use it like a kite to move you forward and to overcome it. And so really the program, the philosophy, and everything we do at the school with our, with our scholarship is about overcoming adversity. I mean, the reality is, is that when I stood on stage and received um, a number of different scholarship opportunities, I also received a portfolio that didn't have a grade 12 graduation certificate. And I know the teachers had a story about how I ended up there. Um, and it wasn't the right story. And so I wanted to go back, and the first thing I did was I shared my story with the teachers. You know, here's what I was going through when I was a kid. And all of them knew that I didn't have a dad and that he'd passed away when I was three and that my mom was incredibly hardworking. Um, but they didn't know what was going on in my head and in my heart, and I really wanted to share that with them first. I also wanted to share it with the students because I know that if someone was in um, that graduating class that came up on stage and shared their life story that I would feel much better and maybe less nervous and apprehensive about what my future held for me. And um, so I felt that I, I owed it to the students, I owed it to my family, and most importantly I owed it to myself. It would be a gift for you to apply. At that point, as Mark said, we'll bring six to eight of you in to an interview. We will take that interview, choose one, and you will get a full ride all the way through whatever university you choose to go to or college you determine to go to. You'll also have a board of directors who is there to mentor you. My message is to not doubt yourself and let things hold you back, but to believe in yourself and you will be able to exceed your own expectations. Lynn Rutan.